Welcome to part two of the zebra drawing and this one is really about refinement of the head. So as I said on part one I like to creep up on a drawing or, or a painting whereas with this drawing I'm working from dark to light but th the thing is I don't want to put that brightest light in first. It's too difficult sometimes to try and erase it to subdue it and I don't want to go over with black so that's why I've really gone very very gradual by bringing the, the drawing forward so I'm going gradually lighter and lighter and lighter and the great thing about the white on black drawings is that to make the lights lighter all I've got to do is push out a little bit harder with the pencil nothing more than that the lightest lights I'll be putting in with the Derwent Chinese white but they'll just be that that real ones that bring the zing the real lightest lights so sometimes with these drawings what you need to do is get one area that's got quite a bit of highlight on it to a relatively finished stage and that's what I'm doing here. Now the reason I'm doing that is I can then judge the full range of tones on the rest of the drawing so I can tell how white these pencils are going to go and how black the paper is because all these black papers none of them are a real pure dark or deep black they're more of a very dark grey. And with white pencils I've yet to find one that's a real opaque pure white. None of them are perform as white as charcoal so there's a limiting factor both with the paper and with the pencil. Now sometimes I take the reference photo into Photoshop and I turn it into a black and white and I make the background black but usually that black is much more punchy. So on my Photoshop reference I've got to keep that in mind that the Photoshop usually is a much blacker black and a much whiter white so I won't have that range to work with on the pencil. So the stripes on the nose area and the highlighted area around the eye are really going to be pretty much the lightest lights I'm going to get other than some on the back of the mane. So that's allowing me to judge all the tones by it. So I'm just going to continue blocking in on this second layer of the face and I'll speed it right up so you can see how it develops. So with that area blocked in I'm going to start to work on the zebra's mane and on the very top of it I'm going to be using a real delicate stroke because although it's kind of the black part of the mane it's being backlit so I want to differentiate it from the black paper so I'm using a really delicate hand there. Notice now that the strokes are coming obviously in that fur and mane direction because on the reference you can actually see individual hairs so starting with a lighter stroke then pushing that a little bit harder to get the individual white hairs and it's important for these to match up then with the white as it goes over the the edge of the zebra's neck so they, it's quite critical to make sure they line up otherwise it's all going to look a bit strange so I'm also making sure that my pencil is staying very sharp and after every one or two strokes I kind of automatically rotate the pencil in my hand and that makes the, the pencil nib or the lead last a lot longer, stay sharp longer. So I'm not just wearing one small section away at a time. So you can see there now I built even that white up. I knew how white I wanted it to go but I've gone from a very light stroke to gradually press in a little bit harder and harder all along. There, so that's the first, the first little white stripe on the main done. So a couple of individual hairs up here as well. And a few on the front there. Very, very subtle, barely perceptible. 
the viewer's eye will actually fill in a lot of what you leave out so not everything needs to be put in a few individual eyelashes as well and I'm picking up that Derwent Chinese white now the main thing about this pencil because it's soft it can really crumble on the end very easily so it's kind of experience you need to work out how hard you can press without it breaking and I, I break it even break mine quite often um, but you need to push hard enough so that you get the full opacity out of the pencil so yeah just as I would normally paint fur starting with the furthest part away and then overlapping in areas you can see how those little little marks on the top really made that section stand out and because the pencil is soft it needs to be sharpened a lot as well and I'm making sure I'm not going over every individual part I want it to look like fur I don't want it to be just a, a white uh, plain area and this is going to be one of the lightest sections of the drawing as well now quite useful to have two or three of these pencils on the go at a time sometimes I have a blunt one just for blending and then a couple already sharpened so that I'm going to keep stopping my flow when I'm when the pencil blunts at all so a few individual hairs as well just to bring that highlight up also pushing a little bit harder there more haze now I've started to block in the stripes again so I'm doing that same technique I don't want to get confused in amongst these stripes it's difficult to see which are white and which are black and now I've got the added difficulty of needing the whites to line up on the main as well so I'm gonna block these in with a light stroke just so I know where to go when I'm starting to place my highlights with those stripes roughly blocked in I'm going to start to really add the details now the shape and the form as well so although I've blocked the stripes in on the lower part of the face for instance it lacks shape and form so the shape and form comes from where the highlights and the darks are so what I'm seeing is is the recesses and the undulations on the zebra's face now this can be a little bit trickier than normally on a normal horse because of those stripes so they've got to actually bypass areas with the black or they may have just a slight sheen to the black as well where the light is picking up on there so that's where I've got to really study the reference now to make this drawing look believable because even though the viewer may not be an expert on horses or any other animals at all generally when they look at something a drawing or a painting if there's something not right it's going to be blatantly obvious to them even though they may not even know what that thing is so at this stage I'm really studying that reference I'm glancing across to it it's on my left hand side just out of shot and I'm looking back and forth all the time and taking my time with it so you can see how just a, a few highlights here and there have really started to make the area around the mouth much more three-dimensional And I'm going to carry on with that technique now before I start to work on the stripes on the neck again. So now I'm working on the neck. This is the time in the drawing when it's critical now to start drawing in the direction of the haze and the fur. Because obviously, even though sometimes the zebra's hair is very very short 
it is actually here. It's not a smooth surface. So I want to draw it into that correct direction. Now I want the pencil quite sharp now to indicate those hairs as well. And I'm overlapping them just as I would when I was doing a painting. I'm just putting a few indications up on the main just so that I don't make a mistake about where those white areas are going to go. As I've said a few times it's really really easy especially with zebras of all animals to get the white and the black in the wrong place and then it's just going to look strange and the most critical part to get right are the connecting parts where that main comes up. And you can see how I'm going over on the very top where the neck meets the main. Now if that area wasn't there then it wouldn't have that undulating three-dimensional effect so once again that's an area to look for in the reference and to make sure you get right you know there's some critical areas that give shape and form and those are the ones that have got to be right each zebra stripe is different so the actual markings don't really matter but it's the shape and form of the animal underneath that really matters Hope you've enjoyed that video and if so I've got lots more on my YouTube channel and don't forget the only way not to miss out on any new videos is to click the subscribe button. On my website I've got full length feature videos, I've got reference photo CDs and ebooks and also the new Easy Trace Line Art tool. So hope to see you either on my YouTube or my website jasonmorgan.co.uk. See you all again real soon.